Hi, I want to show you how to send your acrylic painting in a way that will save you time, save you money, and ensure that it gets to its destination safely without damage. Hi, I'm Matt Filio. I'm an acrylic portrait painter. Um, I'm also an instructor. And I want to show you a method I learned from an art dealer in Brooklyn whom I've had the privilege of doing artwork for and shipping paintings to for the last seven years. If you uh, ship out your artwork for a living or you're a hobby artist and you just want to make sure it gets to you know your loved one safely you know across the other side of the continent or world, I want to show you a technique. It's going to save you time and save you money and uh, you can just use materials you have in your studio. Um, currently I'm working on this portrait of Paul the Apostle praying. In fact I actually finished it and um, I'm going to be sending it out to the client uh, hopefully within the next day or two. So I want to show you my process of how I package that up safely and again just using some materials I have here in the studio. So let's get into the demonstration. This is going to be really helpful for you. All right, so your first step is to get some plastic. Uh, it could be uh, plastic from a shrink wrap project or any kind of plastic. You have painter's plastic used for masking areas while painting, you know, the plastic drop cloth you can get. And uh, you want to cover your painting with that. Now, I had a couple of plastic poly bags that I taped together here. And uh, that's really the, the process for doing this. Uh, you want to get kind of a, a cover for your image just so um, nothing is going to scrape or scratch it. You know, any other uh, materials you use like foam core mat board won't stick to the, the varnish of your painting. Um, that plastic is just a nice barrier for any scuffing and it really uh, we'll make sure that your painting gets there safely. So I, I tape all the corners and make sure everything's, you know, wrapped around it on all sides of the canvas. And uh, again, it's just a, a really nice way to protect it. And it looks good too when it arrives to the customer or wherever you're sending it to. Now the next step is just to tape all those corners together. And again, make sure that they're on there nice and tight. And then uh, we follow up with some shrink wrap. So you're going to shrink wrap around all the edges. Or Actually, this is called cling wrap. You can get that at pretty much any store, Walmart, or your home improvement store. And uh, it works really nice. It comes on a roll, and you just rotate around, and it naturally tears off as you get enough tension on it. So that gives you, again, a little extra protection on the edges and then it keeps that plastic on there nice and tight. Now with that done, what we want to do is take some uh, foam core or mat board and use the painting as a way to mark it off. So you have the same dimensions um, on the foam core or mat board as you do on your canvas. And then use a nice straight edge. I use a T-square. You could use a nice metal ruler as long as it's sturdy and it's not going to go anywhere and then you can uh, go ahead and cut that very very carefully uh, just a disclaimer <laughs> i'm not responsible for any damage to your fingers as you work on this just be very very careful um, i just use a utility knife for that and it helps to have a table uh, that you don't have to worry about getting scratched up you can use cardboard or a self-healing mat underneath Okay, so now uh, you're going to want to have that, that foam core on the bottom or mat board. Mat board is going to be a better choice than foam core. It's a little more durable. Um, and I just use for the top um, a canvas panel that I just don't want to use. It has a corner that just has a little uh, dent in it, so it'll work for this project. Uh, canvas panels work well. They have chipboard inside. They're very, very sturdy. And then just as another layer, I'm using um, some foam core board. So, so we've got the sandwich of the painting, the foam core board, um, and then on the outside, on the painted edge, I have um, the canvas board. Or again, you could use mat board as well. You can purchase mat board 
um, online, usually at a place like uh, eBay or something like that, you'll be able to purchase it pretty inexpensively. I use a couple of scraps, so I have to cut this little skinny piece because this was an extra piece left over, and so I need to make it fit um, with the other piece that I have. So normally you would just use one 16 by 20 piece for a 16 by 20 canvas or whatever your size is, but I was just utilizing an extra scrap. So I'm actually putting two of these pieces together to make the entire size. And this is just an extra barrier of protection um, over the painted surface. So again, you notice we've got on the bottom the foam core and then on the top foam core and then the addition of the canvas panel on the top on the painted side. So we have painting and then two or three pieces actually to protect it. You don't need as much protection on the back. You need way more protection on the front because that's the side that if anything were to jab it or stab it in the shipping process, uh, that's the side that would get damaged first. So um, you'll want to make sure you've got two pieces of material on the front. One on the back should be sufficient. All right, so now with that being done, you want to protect the corners. And I'm using some scrap pieces of foam core and just measuring them off, making sure that they're the same width approximately as the canvas sandwich together with the, the foam core and the um, panel, the canvas panel. And so I'm getting a measure about the same width. And what I'm doing is cutting some strips here. And the strips then are going to be used to just go over the corners. So basically I can use this and now I can just subdivide it into four pieces, you know, one for each corner. And it doesn't have to be fancy. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I'm not even measuring them. I'm just doing it by eye. And I got all four pieces there. And now with that, you'll want to score them in half. So here, you're not going to cut all the way through. Uh, you're going to use less pressure and just cut it halfway through um, or even a third of the way through just so that you can bend it. So if you just basically cut through that layer of paper on the outside of the foam core or the mat board, you might have to use a little more pressure if you have mat board. Uh, then you can bend it and you'll see that it just basically uh, bends at a nice 90 degree angle and you can put all of those uh, corner protectors on the edges. So after you have them all cut and scored then you want to go ahead and place those corner protectors uh, on the edge. Although I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. You actually do need to secure um, all the materials together. That's right. <laughs> so you want to go ahead and tape your um, uh, canvas panel or, or mat board, foam core, foam core on the back and just go around all the edges and just put some tape right in the middle um, on the top and bottom and then on the other side. So you can see you'll have it taped on all four sides when you're done and that's going to make sure that everything is uh, held together and then you can put on your corner protectors. But I'm just getting this nice and secure. It doesn't actually take a ton of tape to uh, package this up. And the beauty of this is that the whole size of this package is so much smaller and it's so much lighter because you don't have a bunch of cardboard and bubble wrap and two layers of cardboard. Um, it keeps your package nice and tight and small and that's going to reduce your shipping costs. All right, now for those corner protectors. So now you go ahead, see how they just really get at a nice 90 degree angle with that scoring on there. Now you just take your uh, packaging tape, your clear packaging tape, and just go over that and secure it in place. Um, then go ahead and do the same on the top. If you don't have one of these tape guns like I have, you can just use the regular packaging tape you know, that you buy um, on a smaller roll, as long as you're able to cut it using a scissors is difficult so just get it on a dispenser where it has the actual metal piece to help you cut it um, you don't have to have a tape gun like I have I just bought that because I do a lot of shipping 
Um, so now you'll go ahead and secure it on the top side. Just rotate around and now you get those corners nice and secure to the edge of the package as you can see. Um, so if anything would happen, um, you know, where the package is going to be, you know, hitting up against another package or, you know, the shippers just are a little abusive with it, um, that'll really protect it. Um, and you don't have to worry about it. It is a canvas on a stretcher bar, so it's pretty sturdy. I mean, it's on a wooden frame. Uh, the corners are the main thing, and then just the piercing of the canvas is the only potential you'd have for damage, really. Um, now you're going to go ahead and put some plastic tape, this packaging tape, over the whole thing. So that just kind of secures everything really nice. And you can kind of stretch the tape a little bit, pull it kind of taut. So it's really making some good tension between the packaging materials and the canvas. So just kind of uh, press it down. And you're going to work your way around where generally the width of the tape won't be enough to go over both sides. You're going to have to do, um, you know, one where it kind of goes down the middle. See how it's not quite hitting the middle of the of the sandwich we have here. Then I'll need to do one on the other side. So now you, we flip it over eventually and overlap it because the the width of the tape isn't enough to span both sides. You'll have to basically use two pieces of tape. Um, for each side of the package. So it would be a total of um, eight pieces of tape, I believe. And there you go, that's how you do it. As you can see, we have the package here all ready to go. Um, all you need to do is slap a label on here from USPS or UPS and uh, take it down to your local courier, have them pick it up and uh, this should get there in safe condition. The UPS, where I do a lot of my shipping through, they told me this is just fantastic shipping, uh, fantastic packaging. Uh, they really complimented me on how well it was taped and protected. So, um, so let that give you some confidence as you go ahead and prepare a package like this for your shipping. You can use this for 16 by 20s or smaller and probably all the way up to 24 by 30. When artwork gets bigger than that, you might want to consider some different options like using a crate or uh, taking your canvas off of the stretcher bars and shipping it rolled up and then sending it that way. I do actually have a video on that to show you that process as well and I should have that in the description uh, of the video for you too. But um, just to let you know this, this process has worked for me very well. I'm going to give you that disclaimer saying I cannot be held liable for any damage to your artwork, so use this method uh, with your own discretion, your own wisdom, and at your own risk. Uh, but it has worked well for me. I believe it will for you as well. Give it a shot. Try it out. And uh, yeah, so anyway, I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching. God bless, and we'll talk to you again. See you later.